stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. All right, join me right now from California is UFC strawweight prospect K Hansen K. Thank you so much for coming on. You got a big smile on your face. Camp must be going well. It is, you know, I'm, uh, I'm living the life, you know, every day is a hard day, but um, I'm doing what I love. So camp's going great. Great. Well, you know, you had you just recently announced some personal news you you got with the management group upgrade management. <laughs> How did, did that stuff all get connected? Um, you know, I, I did a like, couple things with the UFC, like I had a couple opportunities and um, you know, just connections. The fight world, it's big, but it's small, you know, so I've heard a lot about them, um, you know, through a couple other UFC fighters that I've talked to. And then, you know, uh, someone was like, hey, like, look in your other, like, little others folder in your DMs. And I saw them and, uh, you know, I had a good feeling right away just because a lot of the people that I talk to, I trust, you know, so, um, you know, I thought it was finally time to take that step in my career and be a little more professional about this. How did you handle dealing with promotions and just sponsorships and everything before you had yeah, the management? Yeah, so I just did it all by myself. I, uh, you know, I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to my career because I'm a big believer in, like, no one's going to have your back like you have yours, you know? Like, this is my career. No one's going to care more. But um, I think it's it's important to find the right people because when you find the right people, you know, they'll care the same. But... Um, I used to just talk to the promotions, you know, on my own, like Shannon Knapp with Invicta. Um, I have a really good relationship with her, um, like personally. So that one was easy, you know. Um, but as far as the UFC went, I just would text McMaynard and he'd be like, hey, do you want to fight so-and-so on this day? And I'd be like, yep. Like, no negotiating, no nothing. I was just like, yep, let's go. Like, and that's part of my problem is I'm just so eager. And, like, if the UFC was like, hey, like, do you want to fight tomorrow for free? I'd be like, yes, I'll pay you to do that. So... Um, that's why I'm excited to finally have a manager to, you know, to help me out with that part. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a lot less stressful, I guess, especially on the business side of everything. Because... Yeah, I don't know anything about the business side of MMA, so that's why <laughs> I think it's going to be good for me. <laughs> yeah, and especially when you're, you know, you're very young, so it's good to get yeah. somebody that established from a young age. So as you grow as a fighter, as you get older and your brand grows, <laughs> they will be able to put you in the right spots, right? Exactly, yeah. All right, now... 2020 you know you hit the international stage you had yeah. much more visibility as a fighter you gained fans along the way have you noticed your popularity as a fighter increasing um yeah i have you know um i try my best to be like as genuinely myself as possible and i think people kind of like see that i feel like now especially like in the fight world it's a lot of people are trying to play a part that they're not you know and like even if that gets their name out there a little quicker you know like I don't know. Uh, I have noticed my fan base grow and, and, you know, for the most part, I have a pretty like nice fan base. Like I don't get too many like mean, you know, messages and stuff. Um, but like I said, yeah, I have seen it grow um, and, and it's cool. But like, I don't know, it's still all like not new to me because I feel like fighting for Invicta, I've always kind of had like that spotlight on me, you know. Um, so as far as like that goes, it's not new to me. But of course, like at the, the volume it's at, it's just going to keep getting bigger. So um, it's cool, but I still don't try to read too many comments and messages just, just because. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good for everybody's mental health, yeah, everybody exactly. in general, not just yeah. fighters. Exactly. Now, if my memory, my memory's not very good, but if I remember yeah. correctly, after your first fight, I think you took a picture of a, with a guy that won like a, a bunch of money off, off your oh, UFC yeah. debut. Yeah. Have you had any like encounters like that since then or any weird no, confrontations that was, that was my first um that was my for my debut and he bet like thirty seven thousand on me um you know which is insane and uh yeah i just like it was funny i was like on my way home and i was at the airport and then this guy was like hey you can't answer and i was like oh no i hate these kind of like you know i was like oh yeah that's me and then he was like i'm the guy who bet and i was like are you serious and he pulled out the stub, and it was him. And it was crazy. He's like, he's all gucci out, like with the bags and everything. Um, but I mean, it's super cool. He said he had like followed my career with Invicta, so he had a lot of faith in me. So it was cool to see like someone early on, you know, have some faith like that and have like a cool bet. And it's a cool little story to attach to my mm -hmm. debut too. When when he pulled out the the stub for the bet, <laughs> did you think he was pulling out some cash and just just to hook no, you up a I little mean, bit? No, I wish he was, but you know, uh, it's okay. Like if he had the guts to, yeah. you know, to bet that much money, I guess he could keep it. <laughs> okay. 
it's always cool to see that and, and yeah. you know it's almost like you're helping someone out by helping yourself it's so crazy to me to think that like i could never bet thirty seven thousand dollars on anything like i don't care how much money i have like uh, I don't know. Like anything could happen if I I could slip on a banana peel on the way to this. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Like and then you want to bet thirty so uh, crazy. I can't comprehend it. But <laughs> your third fight, your third fight in nine months with the UFC. It almost yeah. seems like things are moving really, really fast. Does it seem like it's moving fast for you or is it just normal? No, this is normal for me. Um, you know, I I'm 21. I made my first debut when I was 18, and I've just kind of been nonstop going. You know. Um, I try to take every opportunity I can, um, no matter what, like, you know, how much time or like work is put in, in between. Um, I don't really like take a lot of time off. Like I'm in the gym the next week after my fight. So I'm pretty much always in camp. It's just when I have a fight, you know, lined up, I kind of fine tune things like tailored towards a certain opponent. But, um, you know, I try to stay as ready as possible all the time. So for me, this is, this is normal. Like it's actually like long breaks believe it or not, for me in between these fights. Um, you know, I with Invicta, I took a lot of my fights on like three weeks notice um, or less. So uh, for me, I've always just been used to staying ready. And, you know, I'm always in camp, so I'm always like excited and ready to go. Being so young in your career and then also wanting to fight yeah. often, you know, wins and losses are going to come. Yeah. When you when you have a, you know, a loss like your last loss where a lot of people felt like you won that fight, is it? Yeah. Is it easier to get over the loss? How do you handle losses? Um, you know, a loss is a loss, no matter how good or bad it is. You know, so of course it sucks, and um, especially like I work so hard and not getting, and, and it's not about the record for me at this point because I'm where I want to be. My performance was good. You know, people saw people. A lot of people thought I won. You know, uh, so the future's still there. Like that doesn't hurt me career-wise. I don't think, and where I want to be. But on the flip side, like, I like to look out for my coaches and I like to, like, look out for myself, you know. So for me, like, the judges making a bad decision cost me half my purse, you know what I mean? So for me, it's just taking care of my coaches. That's, for me, what bothered me the most about that last fight because, you know, I give, you know, every coach 10% or whatever it is and the judges making a bad decision takes that money out of their pockets, you know, which that's that's the biggest thing that, um, that gets me because I like taking care of the people who take care of me. But, um, you know, other than that, like, I had a good performance. Of course, no one likes to stand in the cage and, you know, have the other person's hand raised, especially when they, you know, thought they won. Um, but, I mean, if you follow my career, like, I've been through way worse than that. You know, I've been cut. I've been bloodied. I've been suplexed on my head. Like, I've been through it all at this point uh, when it comes to my career. So, uh, for me, it, it's not discouraging, you know. Um, it is a loss, which sucks, but it doesn't like doesn't discourage me in any way if that makes sense and when you go back and sit down with your coaches and talk about yeah. the last performance heading into mm -hmm. this fight with uh shy and buys what are you discussing with your uh with your coaches you know uh i don't tailor my camps too much to my specific opponents because me and my coaches all kind of believe that i just need to go in there and do me you know uh obviously like there's little tendencies that we'll work on like they drop a hand or if they do this like we'll pick up on those little things but the overall game plan is just to go fight you know um i'm confident on the ground on the feet so i don't really tailor my camps too much but i think in general like coming off that fight like a big concept was like the be first be last you know you know i'd get in and i'd initiate like uh you know a combination i'd land and then like on my exit i would get hit with something and it wasn't anything crazy or hard or damaging or anything. But to the judges, when they see me throw a combo and I back out and I get slapped with the hook, like, to them, maybe she won that exchange, you know? So just little tiny things like that, just kind of nitpicking, um, you know, moving my head a little bit more so that doesn't happen. Um, so just basic things like like that, you know, uh, just trying to grow my fight IQ and, and progress as a fighter in general. Do you let any of the the leftover emotions help you? In, in training camp, does it propel you in your next fight coming up? Um, Yes and no. I mean, if I'm being honest, I usually try to just forget about that last fight, whether I win, lost, like how good I did, how bad I did. Like, I'm such a, I'm trying to work on like being in the moment and living in the moment, even in general, like outside of fighting, because I'm such, like I look at what's next, you know what I mean? Like that's how I'm wired and um, it's good, but it's also, I don't know, it, it can get me in trouble sometimes, but 
So for me, I'm always like, what's next, what's next, what's next? So I don't really, I do a good job of pulling motivation, like, from myself, I feel like, and, you know, wanting to, like, like, make people around me proud, you know, and that's where I pull my, most of my motivation. So I wouldn't say I take too much, like, like fire from my last fight you know obviously I try to build off the good things and work on the bad things but usually uh that fight is, is gone it's on to the next you know I want to be a different fighter the next time I step in the cage and be like way better and not even relate to my last self that's how I try to think of it I guess before heading into this training camp yeah you know what was the schedule like for you for training <laughs> in in California because I know there's a lot of restrictions too yeah, um, so like I said, inside and outside of camp, I have the same schedule. So nothing really changes except for, like, intensity and, like, you know, diet and stuff. Um, but, I mean, every day I usually do two to three sessions a day, you know, a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours at night. I'll do a strength session in between. Um, I'm kind of a workhorse, so I'm trying to work on actually taking, you know, recovery days and, and doing stuff like that. Um, you know, especially since I'm young, I, I have the ability to just kind of like run my body into the ground right now and not have any consequences, but, um, I, I don't think that's going to last very long. So, you know, it's just, for me, it's basically trying to balance like, um, like not overtraining, you know, and if I do overtrain, like making sure I am giving my body that recovery and rest that it needs. Cheyenne Bays, she's very intense, very yeah. aggressive very yeah. outspoken i've interviewed her in the past you know yeah. both of you guys competed for invicta so i'm pretty sure she's been on your radar somewhat what are yeah. your thoughts on her you know i think uh you know it's gonna be a battle of the wills you know i think we're both young we're both like really talented you know we both kind of have an attitude about us um and i think it's gonna make for a great clash you know um she's really game she's really scrappy but so am i you know so uh i think it's gonna just come down to who's who's scrappier who's more of a bully you know um because I feel like we're both pretty well-rounded, so. Why do you think the UFC decided to put you against another prospect? You know, you would think that they would put yeah, you against a veteran. I don't know, and honestly, that's why I got a manager, too. Because, um, you know, Cheyenne's great. I'm not knocking her. But this will be my third time fighting a debuter, you know. So I'm not really sure. And, like, I don't know. A lot of people I've talked to have thought I won the last fight, too. So, you know, whether I'm 1-1 one one or 2-0 and oh in some people's eyes in the UFC, like, I, I feel like I kind of deserve to step up, you know. But, like I said, Cheyenne is tough, and, um, you know, the day in the office is a day in the office for me. So, um, I don't know. Hopefully things change in the future and other opportunities open up. But, as far as this one goes, like, uh, fighting Cheyenne isn't a step down in talent, you know what I mean? It might be as far as, like, she's making her debut and it's my, you know what I mean? But, as far as talent goes, like, there's a lot of us up and comers that like are making our debuts, and, but we're we're just as game as people at the top. You know what I mean? Um, so, like I said, it's not a step down in talent for sure, but um, you know, I'm hoping that you know in the future, my, me and my management can can pull something different. Do you believe that the the strawweight division is the the best division out of all the women's divisions? You're proof of it, right? Yeah, I mean, I think for sure. Uh, I think the flyweight division needs a little more time to develop. You know, especially in the UFC, it's kind of new, um, and I feel like most girls kind of walk around at like or like walk around at the weight where they should fight at strawweight. You know, so I just think that's why there's so many talented women at strawweight. Um, it's for sure the deepest women's division there is and the toughest, um, which is why it's like a nice, like, I don't know for me, um, like I like that challenge, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like once you get to the top, it's, it's just so it's earned, you know what I mean? Um, I had someone ask me if I'd go to 125 and try to get the belt there because it was an easier path. And it's like, I wouldn't mind going to 125 a couple times to fight or if the UFC really wanted me to do that, I'd be down. But, um, like, not because of the fact that it would be easier. Like, to me, like, getting the belt at strawweight, like, holds so much more. You know, I want to beat the the Whaley Zings. I want to beat the Rose Nama Yunus. Like, I want to beat all those people. And, like, I don't know. I want to fight them right now. And, like, to get the belt, like, in the strawweight division, um, I just feel like it's, it's the toughest road. And I feel like that's the road that I want to take. Yeah, many... Uh straw weights i've talked to they've said the same exact thing is yeah. like i could go fly, fight at flyweight yeah but... exactly you know and like i think eventually like the divisions will even out a little bit you know as people transition from both mm -hmm. you know but 
uh, I still think the strawweight division is just, it's the deepest division, you know, with talent, like, just range of talent, range of age, like, there's vets, there's newcomers, but like I said, like, the girls at the bottom are freaking so tough, just like the girls at the top. Um, there's, like, not really many easy fights at strawweight, um, which is why it's, like, such a satisfying division to get the gold at, you know? You mentioned earlier that you're focused on yourself, you know, so mm -hmm. what type of performance are you expecting out of yourself against Cheyenne? You know, um, I'm big with, like, I like to compete with myself, you know, so I'm just looking to, to outfight the last K. Um, you know, I just want to have better cardio, better striking, better angles, better movement, more confidence, you know. Um, I want, I just want to level up on everything. Uh, I could care less about, I, I don't watch footage, so I could care less about how much she's leveled up or what she's doing or what her game plan is. Like, I'm just excited to go in there because, I'm working my ass off right now, and, um, you know, I feel like from my debut to my second fight, I was a whole different fighter, and people saw that progression, and I feel like they're going to think the same thing, you know, with this fight. Um, I I don't stop working, and, and I have, like, this weird drive in me, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, to come out and, and, like, show what I've got better at. Definitely. Um, a couple more questions yeah. just pertaining to MMA in general. And I mm -hmm. wanted to play boss for a day with you. You okay. know, say that you're the boss. Yeah. You're at the okay. top of the totem pole at the Nevada State Athletic Commission. What is something that you would like to change to make the sport better? Or I guess mm -hmm. equal out the playing field or somewhat? Um, I think the judging needs some work. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know what the answer is, but it's also not my job to know what the answer is. But, um... You know, I don't know what the criteria to be a judge is, but I just feel like a lot of them don't know a lot, you know. Uh, I remember the night I fought, one of the, the judges gave Felder the fight, and I was like, man, Felder's a G, but he did not win that. You know, in no way should he have yeah. someone gave him that fight, but someone did. And that same judge gave Corey McKenna the fight too, and it's just like, you know, uh, like, this isn't just, like, a, like, it's not just a fight. Like, these are our careers. Like, like I said, like, that's taking money and food out of my pocket and my coach's pocket. It's, like, that's, that's to me, that's the biggest thing. It's, like, we need, to, we need to figure something out. I don't know what it is, but we need better judges. Because sometimes there are just some decisions where it's, like, what is going on, you know? Um, but, like, other than that, I don't know. Uh, I know that, like, USADA just kind of, lifted that uh, marijuana ban, mm -hmm. you know, which that's cool. But the Nevada State of the Commission still has it. So it's kind of like it doesn't make any sense because cool, like you saw it doesn't care, but the commission does. So, I mean, maybe if, if you're fighting it on like uh, Fight Island, you're good to go. Maybe. I don't know how that works, but I fight, I'm fighting in Vegas. So um, I just I don't get how that's like considered a performance enhancing thing you know yeah. but i mean i don't know so those are my two things i guess judges being the main one um there's some great judges don't get me wrong but every like every once in a while you're just like i don't uh, it's not computing you know like i just don't get it well i think with the judging um i think it should be more transparent maybe the judges yeah. can talk about their decisions after the fight and maybe. the commission should be able to overrule judges yeah yeah they have to be yeah, like I said, I don't know the answer, but it's not my job. Mm -hmm. so someone gets paid yeah. to find the answer to that, and they need to do that because I don't know what it is, but it, something needs to happen. <laughs> All right. And also, um, you know, Stephen A. Smith, he comes out. I'm pretty sure you've been asked about this, yeah. but I didn't yeah. want to ask about his comments. I just wanted to ask about the obstacles and the battles you have faced, you know, or you face <laughs> right now as a woman in MMA. Could you talk about the, some of those? Um, You know, honestly... I I can't say I have any. I've always been treated with respect. Um, you know, I did fight for an all-women's MMA organization for most of my career, and I got nothing but respect. Obviously, like, you get the messages or, like, the tweets and stuff where it's like, women should never fight, like, you suck, you shouldn't. But to me, those are, like, those are irrelevant. Like, those don't bother me. I don't even pay because, like, who are those people, you know? Um, as far as, like, real challenges and stuff, like, I don't. I don't really see any, you know what I mean? I feel like women are really marketable and we have a lot of really great opportunities now. Um, so for me, I haven't really had any issues like because I'm a woman, you know, um, I guess that maybe I've just been fortunate, but 
Yeah. Well, I think it's very clear that women are more marketable than men. I, this is my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, like, it depends, you know, personality-wise and everything. Yeah. But I feel like right now is the best time in history to, like, be a woman, be a woman like, uh, you know, especially in MMA. Like, um, everyone wants – not everyone because there's some haters. But, like, a lot of people look forward to the women fights. You know what I mean? Like, Whaley Zhang and Joanna are fighting. Like, who? Like if you're not watching that, like, you're just – you're just hating, you know what I mean? Like, and like, those are the type of people who like, you just, you can't pay any mind to because they're going to be mad at something no matter what. So, uh, like I said, for me, besides the stupid, like comments and tweets I get, which don't hold any, you know, weight on me. Um, like I haven't really had any problems, you know, in the gym, like I'm respected, uh, at Invicta events, I was respected at UFC events. I've been respected. Like I've never been disrespected because I'm a woman. So, I guess I'm fortunate in that sense. Definitely. Well, that's that iron mindset that you have <laughs> somehow accumulated at such a young age, and it's great to see. Well, thank you're you. back in the cage, March 20th, UFC yes, Fight Night, Las Vegas. Kay, thank you so much for the time, and uh, good luck yeah. on the fight and, and all the best. Thank you so much. Take a move in the ring. You can hit me with